In this extended video aimed at beginners, we'll go through the entire workflow for photogrammetry of surfaces to create a material. This is meant as an intro to scanning to get a result as quick as possible. Photogrammetry is a complex and in-depth process and we'll only be covering the absolute necessary steps to get things done. We'll start off first by acquiring our photos, reconstructing in the free version of 3D Zephyr, processing our material inside of Art Engine, and finally exporting to Unity, Blender, and Unreal 5. You won't need any hardware besides a camera, so I'll be using my iPhone 13 for this. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first step is to acquire our photos. This is going to be the most crucial step in the process. And the best bet to take photos is on a cloudy, overcast day, and also pick a surface that you want to scan that is non-reflective, so no puddles or metallic surfaces. We'll be scanning this area today, and I'm just going to try to capture this section outlined in red. The way that you want to take photos is to aim your camera directly above the surface and just take incremental steps to capture each photo. So this is my surface. Start at the bottom corner, take a photo, sidestep and snap another photo until I've covered the entire surface that I want to capture. Try to get as much overlap as possible, around 60-70% to 70 for each image. I'm using the camera on my phone to take these. If you're using something heavier like an SLR, keep your hands steady or invest using a tripod. For the material that we're going to be doing today, we're going to be using 50 images for processing. The next step is to drop all your images into a single folder like this. So I've got all 50 images sitting in a folder and then we can jump into Zephyr for model processing. If you don't already have 3D Zephyr, you can head over to 3dflow.net and just scroll down to the products down here and we're going to pick the 3D of Zephyr free version. You notice this has a 50 photo limit, which is why we only took 50 photos. Let's go ahead and just download that now with the link over here and get that installed and then we can jump into the software. To get started inside of 3D Zephyr, this is the UI and interface. We can just go to workflow and choose quick project. This will load up a quick project dialog window and the first thing we're going to do is point the folder to the folder of images that we have. So this is the area where I've dropped in all my images. So I'm just going to choose, pick choose. And then the next thing we're going to do is change these uh, steps over here from general to surface scan. So since we are processing a material, we can actually choose the surface scan preset like so. And the textured mesh is just going to stay as general. For the quality settings over here, we can leave them at default if you want, or we can change some of these to high details for a higher detail finish. Definitely want to leave the final textured mesh as a default single texture for now. And I'm just going to hit run. So depending on your machine's specs, this can take up to 10 to 30 minutes to process. And what this is going to do is load all the images that you put together and reconstruct them into a 3D model. So I'm just going to let this run and we'll jump right back into it once it's completed. All right, so now that everything's finished processing, we're just gonna have a look at our textured mesh. So sometimes you're gonna get this little error here where everything is black after processing. If this happens, you just go to scene, camera, and look at, and we're just gonna choose textured mesh. And there we go. So now we have our fully processed model. So this is what was created from those 50 images that we processed earlier. And if we wanna have a look at the lighting, we can just turn the lighting on. This is how it looks like under some default lighting, and we can just enable and disable the texture map. So you can see that this is the raw geometry that was created from the 50 images. So it's going to turn this back on. Um, we can look at the stats of the textured mesh over here on the left hand side. So if I right click on this, go to properties, you'll see that this is sitting at 2.4 million triangles, which is obviously way too much for us to import into a game engine. So our next step is to rip off the information from this model onto textures. That way we can create our full material for our render engine. So I'm going to go to our textured mesh on the left hand side, right click, choose export. And we're going to change the export format to OBJ. And we're going to choose export as single texture. And we're also going to enable the local rendering reference system. And then we're just going to hit export. 
and we're just going to put this into an area where we can import that back into Art Engine for processing. So I'm just going to name this ground underscore high, just so I know that it's the high poly version of the ground material. And what this will do is it will export the high poly geometry and also its corresponding texture sheet as well. So if we look at our output folder, we have the texture and then the OBJ file over here. And the next step is to go into Art Engine to actually transfer these onto texture maps to build our final material. So inside of Art Engine, we're just going to first grab the texture that was exported and also its corresponding OBJ or model file. And just drag and drop those into the Art Engine workspace. So now that our high poly model is loaded, you can, if you want to, drag and drop this into the 3D viewer window, like so, and then drag the texture sheet on top of that as well. So this is our reconstructed surface over here, which is at 2.4 million triangles. The next step is to generate a baking surface on top of this. So I'm just going to select the high poly mesh, hit spacebar, type in plane generator. And I'm just going to leave the settings at default. I'm just going to right click and execute that. And what this will do is create a surface plane that's projected onto the high poly model. That way we can actually start to do our bakes. So if I view the plane generator model, it creates a surface like this. And this is what we're going to be using as our low poly to bake from the high. So next we can grab our baker node, like this, and input the high into the source, and then our plane generator into the target. And then we're also going to transfer the texture sheet onto the low poly model. So we're going to put this into the texture. And for our parameters in the baker, I'm just going to enable color. I'm going to turn off positions. We're going to choose a 4K map. And for the front and rear scales, I like to use something like 10 by 10, just so it captures everything in its correct depth. And change the subsamples to about 4 for a better quality. So the higher subsamples you put, the longer it's going to take to generate the bake. So with that done, we're just going to hit Execute Node. So now that we have our bakes completed, I'm just going to double click on the baker node. So you can see that we've transferred the color map, the normal map, and the height map, and also the ambient occlusion. So the first thing that we're going to address is the normal map, which is which is baked out in DirectX. So we're just going to flip that first. So now we have an OpenGL normal map. And the other thing is we need to also need to create a roughness map for this. So it's so going to use the roughness gloss generation node. Let's pipe that in there. Double click that. And I'm not going to go too deep into how to create a good roughness map. We're just going to use one of the basic presets. Of course, you want to later on go in here, fine tune some of these sliders, and overlay some other images on top of the roughness map to get something more to your liking. We're going to leave most of our settings at default for now just to get our material done as quickly as possible. So with those two created, I'm just going to put a composed material over here. And I'm just going to pop in the roughness map, the normal map, and the color map into the albedo, and then the height into height, and the ambient occlusion to ambient occlusion. So if we double click on the composed material, now we have our full PBR set over here. So we can start to look at that in the 3D viewer. So the next step in processing this material is we can see there's lots of empty space on the outsides here, right? So we definitely don't want these black areas on the border of your material. So we're going to put this into a seam removal node. And then we're also going to take advantage of the ignore section over here. And the way that we use this is we're going to insert a mass paint node and just plug in the compose into the material, like so. It's going to double click on this node and then start to paint in the areas that I don't want. And I'll actually go to the ambient occlusion channel here to do this. So it's going to paint in the black areas. And then now we can plug in 
the output into the ignore of the scene removal. So if we go to the scene removal node, I'm just going to execute this. What this will do is take the mass paint information from the ignore section and actually fill that in with synthetic data. So now that that's complete, you'll see that it actually filled in those black areas with new data. So we can look at the before and after. And just double check the normal map, height map, roughness map, and the ambient occlusion map. And we can just check that in the 3D viewer up here. So I usually like to use sphere to check my materials and just change the tiling to two just to see how that looks roll the light across it and we can just change the tessellation up and enable the height that way we can just see that our height map is reading correctly great so just in a few simple steps we've created a towel material from our original scan the next step now is to output our material to unity Now the cool thing about Art Engine is you can have multiple outputs per graph. So the first one that we're going to do is output to Unity. So we're going to choose the output node and then we're going to choose Unity export and choose Unity direct link. And I'm just going to place this directly into my Unity assets folder where I want the material to show up. We're just going to give it a name, so ground material. I'm just going to choose the asset type. So if you're using URP lit or HDRP lit, or if you're going to use tessellation, we can also choose that. For this example, I'm just going to choose HDRP lit. And we're going to leave everything else as default. And I'm going to choose overwrite existing, just in case we decide to modify the material and re-export. And I'm just going to press export. And what this will do on the Unity end is ingest the textures, create the mass map for you, and also build the full material for you. So we're just going to jump in. So inside of our Unity scene, we have a blank scene open uh, with a blank material on this plane over here on the surface. So here's the material that got ingested. So you'll see that automatically it assigned all the maps for you. And this is just ready to use. I can just drag and drop it onto my surface like so. And usually what I like to do is just grab a directional light and just double check that the shading is looking okay. So I'm just checking the pebbles and the rocks and everything um, is looking as they should and can just rotate around the view and just making sure this looks good. So now that this is all set up, you can always go back into Art Engine and then do some modifications and then hit re-export. Next, we can create an output to Blender. So I'm just going to create a new output node like this, and then attach the scene removal node to the output. And this time, I'm just going to change the output path to an area where I want to export the bitmaps to. And it's going to leave this as PNG. I'm going to choose Overwrite Existing again, and I'm just going to hit Export. So this is going to do a bitmap export of all your textures. So just jumping inside of Blender, again, I have a blank scene like so, and I have the shader window open like this. I'm just going to click on the object here, and I'm just going to press New. That's going to give us a new principal BSDF shader. So I will be using the Node Wrangler add-on. If you're wondering where that is, you just want to have that enabled in the add-on section, uh, Node Wrangler over here. And the benefit of using this is I can click on the principal BSDF shader like this, hit Control, Shift, and T. That's going to load up a dialog window where I can select the group of textures that are exported. Just hit OK. And that's going to automatically hook up all the maps to the correct slots like this. So now we have our material already ready to use inside of Blender. So now I'm just viewing this inside of Eevee. What I usually like to use is cycles for my renders. So I'll just enable that. You know, get a much, much more accurate result for your lighting calculations. So if I just move the HDR around, you can start to see and evaluate the normal map applied to the shader. So you can always take this a step further because we do have displacement enabled. And we can always go to the shader properties and turn that on and actually displace the geometry. And our last step now is to create the Unreal 5 exporter. 
So because Unreal 5 does use DirectX as opposed to OpenGL, we need to flip our normal map before export. So to do this, we're just going to use a split material node and then add the scene removal to that. And what that's going to allow us to do is expose all the bitmaps available for that material. So I'm just going to choose a normal flip, attach that to the normal. So now we have a DirectX normal map like this. And to recombine this again together, I'm just going to use an amend material. And what I'm going to do with this is actually just place the original material into the material slot and then change the other over here back to normal and then pipe the direct X normal map into that slot. What that's going to do is essentially override the normal map with this new one here using the amend material. So now we have a direct X version of our material available for export. So now all we have to do is just attach another output node and I'm going to output this directly into my Unreal 5 project. And I'm just going to choose override existing again and leave everything else as default and just hit export. So now if I drop into my Unreal scene and now we have everything importing automatically like so. And what you're going to see down here is the normal map will automatically be imported as normal map. You just want to hit OK. And the next thing to do before we actually create a material is to go to each of our non-colored maps. So your ambient occlusion. I'm just going to uncheck sRGB. Let's hit save for each of these. Because these don't contain color data, we actually want to disable the sRGB flags on these guys. So my ambient occlusion, my height, and my roughness, we're just going to disable the sRGB and just press save. And I can close that down. And then now we're going to create a new material. So we'll call this except for ground. I'm just going to apply that onto the surface. And I'll double click on the material. And we need to start to hook these things up manually. So for a base color, I'm going to choose our beetle map, our roughness, our roughness map here. And then our normal map to the normal slot. And then lastly, our ambient occlusion map as well. And you also do have your height map if you want to add this into the pixel depth offset or do some displacement work, but we're not going to do that today. So I'm just going to hit save. So now we have our asset inside of Unreal. Again, I'm just going to grab the directional light, just kind of rotate that around just to check the shading that's looking okay. So it's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to jump back into Art Engine and just kind of sum things up. We do have three different outputs here, which can get a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the first output node, which is the Unity to export. And I'm just going to click on Create a New Frame. And I'm just going to change this to Unity export. That way we kind of know where we're exporting things. This one's going to be the Blender export. And then we have the last one here, this group of nodes. Put a frame around this. And we'll call this UE5 export. And if you've made it this far into the video, thanks for joining me in going over this full workflow for material scans. Now, if you're interested in 3D Zephyr, there is an integrated Art Engine plugin available for the paid versions of the software, which I cover in a previous video, which you can check out in the link in the top right-hand corner. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.